Hello and welcome to WeBack Summit 2018. I feel honored and privileged to be part of the list of speakers this year and especially with regards to the topic that I will be addressing soon. That is, role of husbands and in-laws as a birth team for vaginal birth of the cesarean in India. This year, the theme is about respect, honor, and education, and I believe that Indian mothers or those from the South Asian countries or Indian subcontinent, just like any other mother from around the world, deserve all of it. The reason I say so is because most of the Western societies and cultures mostly contain a nuclear family system, where most of the time the husband or the partner play a key role in providing support to the expecting mother from pregnancy to birth. But the story is different in India. Are the mothers coming from the Indian subcontinent where most of the times on an average a married woman has to live in a joint family with her in-laws where she is expected to adapt to their different cultural, traditional, religious and superstitious beliefs that coexist with not so good maternity health care system. So today in this context I will be talking about as a husband or her in-law how should you respect, honor and educate her or be part of her journey of acquiring knowledge in order for her to have a successful way back. <laughs> I'm Zahra Batu, a Mani Bird Childbirth Educator and Doula in Training. I presently reside in Saudi Arabia as a third culture Indian expat and often keep traveling to India. This year has been already great in terms of introducing a Mani Birch philosophy to India. My presentation is also catered to women from Indian subcontinent, yet I believe it is a great way to understand the culture and perspective of birds of the region for others, which is the prime focus of my talk today. I have been an active participant as a listener of the past VBAC conferences by Natural VBAC and have interacted online, offline with many expecting mothers from the Indian subcontinent. South Asian countries who were in great need of support for their VBAC attempts. I realized that the number one issue many of the mothers faced was of dealing with in-laws or husbands or getting them involved. And I believe that as an Indian birth professional, it is my duty to address this particular issue in context to pregnancy, labor, and birth. Additionally, further to my investigative skills, I have come to the conclusion that even with the changing lifestyle pattern within the subcontinent region, there are still pregnant mothers looking out for guidance and support for VBAC. Hence, it is a need of the earth and for the society as a whole that any expecting mother who stays with her in-laws should be fully aware, acquire the necessary knowledge, and get the required support during her pregnancy to her labor and birth while being culturally sensitive and accommodating in order for her to achieve the kind of birth that she wants. <laughs> Any mother that comes from the region or has been married to one needs to understand that birth in India or Indian subcontinent is more of a joint family affair. If not in the urban areas, but mostly in the majority of the middle and lower class families in rural areas. Just like how it is a game of authority or power between different relationships according to their hierarchy, similar is the position of birth. Birth empowers women and birth as a game of power. Any woman who is to birth, if given the control to achieve the kind of birth she wants, it most likely will leave her empowered for the rest of her life. And sometimes if she becomes empowered, she may or may not disagree. When she disagrees, there is a fear of disrespect. However, it is important for the family, including husband or the elders, to understand that disagreement or empowerment doesn't equate disrespect. Having the right to state her opinion doesn't mean that those in authority are disrespected. It simply means that as an individual, she wishes to exercise the rights she has, and they may not necessarily be in favor of your wishes or expectations. When it comes to we back, it is her right as an individual to get informed and educated about the list of options given by the care providers to her so that she takes a well-informed decision that she wants, not what her husband or in-laws want her to. Surviving childbirth is not enough. Now, since we have recognized that it is her birth right, what is it? 
As a childbearing woman, your human rights include the right to dignity, privacy, respect, the right to bodily autonomy and refusal of treatment, the right to culturally relevant treatment, the right to fully informed consent, the right to discriminatory treatment, the right to non-violence. These infographics have been taken from birthindia.org. Birth India is a non-profit, non-governmental organization registered in 2011 in India to support families in the community in seeking and selecting skilled, respectful care providers for women during their birthing year. Also, what do we mean when we say that the mother has a right to positive childbirth experience, which of course includes VBAC, means she has the right to respect and dignity, a companion of choice, of her choice, clear communication by maternity staff, pain relief strategies, mobility in labor and birth, position of choice. India's C-section rates are soaring, and it is largely and from very long dominated by the medical model of care, mostly taken over by the greedy corporate medical and healthcare system, while the very new field of midwifery model of care has just been introduced. So on an average, a mother's birth experiences, or rather deliver experiences, are nowhere near to what the mother desires to have or dreams of. An average birthing mother in India is mostly taken care by obstetricians, gynecologists, or obstetric nurses that are promoted in the name of midwife, with the actual midwifery course being launched recently in the past year. Studies say that India's private hospital cesarean rate at 65%, out of which the state of Telangana has 61%, the highest in India. Anecdotal evidence from hospital administrators and consumer societies put some doctors in hospital cesarean rates at 98%. The World Health Organization recommends optimal rates of 5 to 15%. Additionally, many women birthing vaginally will receive an unnecessary routine episiotomy and the associated trauma. Here are some of the common reasons cited for cesareans. Women who are advised C-sections because of the following reasons should explore all their options. Medical opinions differ in these areas. Find a doctor willing to support physiological birth under these circumstances. Nickel cord, amniotic fluid, post days pregnancy, fetal head not engaged in floating. Whereas WHO states something else. The World Health Organization states that the following as absolute maternal indications for cesarean birth, these incidences occur in only 1-2% to 2 of all births. Severe antepartum hemorrhage, major cephalopelvic disproportion, transverse line persistent probe presentation. Based on what we have seen earlier, when women who feel that they have been cheated, manipulated, and bullied for their previous surgeries, they embark this new journey of feedback, searching for feedback from the hospitals, care providers, and birth professionals who can support them throughout their birth. But it is important to understand that before these care providers, the role of their families and partners is what determines their strengths to keep fighting and going to achieve what they want to. And that is what I will be discussing in here today. So how the husbands and their in-laws define the proactive birth team in this VBAC journey of the mother is what defines the outcome of the birth. The first and foremost thing the partners and in-laws need to understand is that although the birth of the baby may be a joint family affair, yet it is the only shared experience of the mother and baby that reshapes their individual personalities for the rest of their lives. And it is, the, it's, it is this experience for both the mother and the baby whose consequences only they will live or die with. Secondly, at the end of the day, all of us want a healthy mother and baby. But we need to know which route the mother wishes to take since it is her journey and you can be there as a support, guide or a cheerleader. Your supporting and encouraging role as a partner and as someone who owns owns this lineage is significant. If you give her the warmth, the control, the care, the good words, and all the love that she needs, then she will be forever grateful to you throughout her life, cherishing the beautiful memories of birth you gave to her and her baby. 
Now, after understanding how significant your role is, let's come back to the ways you can offer your support to her through her reback journey. I thought it is easily understood if I categorize your support as emotional, physical, mental, and information. Supporting the mother emotionally means validating her emotions, feelings, and the way she visualizes her pregnancy, labor, and birth. It also implies being there for her when she needs you for her emotional fulfillment. She needs to be constantly reassured that, the, that her decision to try for VBAC is respected and supported until she achieves her goal. She needs to be encouraged and motivated when she comes across people or care providers that intimidate her or cause fear and distress to her. As a support person or a part of the birth team, you have to be involved from the beginning that is a pregnancy and assess her emotional needs accordingly. You need to know that her emotions have a great impact on the kind of hormones her body releases. So as a support person, you can make sure that she feels secure, loved, and positive about her pregnancy and the decision of feedback so that her body works in the way it should. Many mothers coming from this region experience a tug of war situation in their way back journey, particularly because of the conflicting suggestions from their care providers or their in-laws. As a member who is concerned about her and her baby, you can help her choose a decision she seems to be tilting on more rather than playing a role of aiding her to give up on her choices under pressure or any authority. You can help her to instill a sense of confidence in her for whatever she is doing for her and her baby and the way she is doing it, rather than criticizing her efforts or discouraging her to present her birth plan or discuss her reback options. You need to make her feel that you trust her and will be there with her through the thick and thin. Lastly, you also need to back off sometimes if she wants you to in certain situations and at the same time respect her space and privacy. Some of the mothers do not wish to have their mothers or mothers-in-law during the labor or birth being a support person. It is your duty to respect that decision of hers. You also need to understand that in such scenarios, you aren't being rejected, but she, as a laboring mother, wishes to have those around whom she feels secured. Perhaps it's only the status of your relationship with her for her to take this decision and has nothing to do with you as an individual. So it is always better to not take it personally or make this a way to demean her because of some family politics. Physical support involves playing a proactive role to make the mother achieve her successful way back. It also, me it also means making available to her all the resources that she needs in this journey. You can assist her with the childbirth education classes for VBAC or be part of them and get informed to actively participate in her plan. You can schedule her routine prenatal exercises and make sure that she does them correctly and on time. You can keep track of her diet and ensure that she has healthy, well-balanced diet for her and her baby. You can enroll her in VBAC coaching classes too to have her informed of the nutrition she needs while trying for VBAC. It's important to know the statistics of successful VBAC rates of the hospitals or doctors whom the mother is consulting with. This will give you and her the idea of what you can expect with them. You can find out the information of the VBAC supportive medical care providers and birth professionals that she can count on as a second or third opinion, just in case. Ensure that the birth team you are part of is on the same page with the mother with regards to the VBAC growth plan she has. You can actively help her simulate labor and help her practice deep breathing and relaxation for labor. You can check out the ambience of the place where she's most likely to labor and ensure that it is as she wants it to be. Physical support also involves taking care of her older children when she needs rest and creating a plan for arranging for them while she is in labor. You don't have to forget to even take the tour of the birthing place or hospital where she wishes to attend for VBAC. If you are coming from the region or have been married to one, then you may have an idea of lack of awareness and help for mental health since long, especially for various perinatal illnesses, that is prenatal and postnatal mental health disorders or illnesses. Unfortunately, not much is known among the society and many of the mothers suffer silently until they come across headlines in the newspapers of cases of sudden suicides or unknown causes of death for postpartum mother and babies. 
In order to find a solution, we have to first acknowledge the problem. Here, the problem is to validate the existence of serious perinatal illnesses and create awareness among the society and present them with the treatment plan and resources on where to seek help from. So as a part of her birth team, it is your duty to be informed about her present mental health status. This also means that you keep assessing her mental health from the beginning of the pregnancy and are also informed about her mental health history, given if any disorders or perinatal illnesses and take necessary steps to minimize those episodes. Get the right mental health care providers and additional support and create a plan to be prepared with the required support just in case after birth she goes through or has to go through the same. Most of the mothers who wish to attempt VBAC are those who have had birthing experiences or trauma and have suffered postnatal depression or other disorders. You need to know if they have taken help and have recovered from the previous experiences or not. Also, if there are chances for them to go through the same situation again or not. Some of the perinatal illnesses include postnatal depression, perinatal bipolar disorder, postpartum depression, postpartum PTSD, postpartum OCD, etc. As a support person, it is important for you to be educated about the various existing perinatal illnesses and the treatment plans and care providers available for you to seek help so that you do not have to go through the shock or regret later. Correct treatment with the right care providers does help and may even end the space completely. Most of most of the part of this responsibility lies on you for the sake of well-being of the mother and baby. Be a companion that lifts her up and makes her fly high, not someone who crushes her and takes away every essence of her. Her mental health is important and, all, and plays a big role in the way she takes care of the baby. Always remember, happy mother builds a happy home. Now, some of the ways you can provide her with informational support includes shortlisting good independent childbirth educators or VBAC coaches, learning about the differences between the medical model of care and midwifery model of care for mothers attempting for VBAC, analyzing and getting a medical opinion on how and if the mother fits in the realm of trying for VBAC based on her medical history, scar and present pregnancy. Helping the mother with a list of care providers in the order of priorities, just in case she feels that she needs to change her present one. Educating her about her birth rights, sharing successful VBAC stories with her, giving her the right scientific and evidence-based information through reliable sources, helping her prioritize for her VBAC birth plan from the list of options available to her, introducing her to various VBAC support groups, helping her to meet mothers who have had successful VBACs, getting informed about the actual complications that necessitate C-section, knowing about short-term and long-term risk of C-section and VBAC if it goes wrong, and sharing with her the same, learning about the hospital policies where she is to attempt for VBAC, shopping around for the doula and helping her to be a good birth consumer, helping her practice informed decision-making and creating a good support network for her to get all that she needs to have a successful VBAC. For the purpose of information, I have decided to share a few more works by Birth India. Here is one on informed birthing. <laughs> what is it? Informed birthing happens when a woman has done her research and is aware of all of her options. Women deserve healthcare providers who will have her and her baby's best interests in mind, who will support her informed choices, and who will be up to date on evidence based practices in pregnancy, labor, birth, and breastfeeding. Unfortunately, too many hospitals and doctors are trying to take advantage of expectant families. So here's how to spot them. Bait and switch. Sometimes you may be promised everything you want throughout your pregnancy and then at the last minute, the provider will present you with a false emergency and your birth wishes will no longer be followed unless you change care providers. If at any point you do not feel supported, you have the right to change care providers. You can always get a second opinion. False advertising, hospitals and doctors that refer to their services as wellness or well-women clinics, natural birth friendly, a birthing center, mother baby friendly, or offering water birth, midwifery care, or home birth, are often using a trendy label to increase profits instead of to truly represent the model of care and the services they offer. Be aware of homeopaths and Ayurvedic doctors promoting their services and natural birthing centers. There's no rush. 
Take the time to interview at least two to three doctors. Ask experienced mothers and birth support professionals to guide you to doctors who are truly supportive of physiological birth. Birth networks are also a helpful resource in providing a care provider. Is it really an emergency? You have probably heard the following common reasons for the healthcare providers to recommend induction or emergency cesarean. Cord around baby's neck, amniotic fluid leaking, floating head, too much fluid, too little fluid, big baby, gestational, gestational diabetes, speech presentation, twins, high BP, and many more. These factors only rarely indicate a true emergency. Find a knowledgeable provider who is comfortable to support normal birth and your way back with all of these variations. So what do you do when you or the mother is unhappy with the way she was cared? When not satisfied with care, there are many ways to be heard. Community action. You can write letter to the hospital, media and online petitions, complaints and redressal, legal action with the consumer courts, punitive action, Filing a criminal complaint against a doctor, disciplinary action, you can file a complaint with the professional medical bodies, recommendatory action, uh, you can lodge a complaint before the National State Human Rights Commission. When shopping around for your healthcare providers, this is how you choose a team. Most of the people, including sometimes the husbands and in-laws, they don't realize that healthcare providers and base of birth they choose have a huge effect on the outcome of their birth and their breastfeeding journey. So it's your duty to educate yourself on your options in birth and choose a doctor whose values align with yours. The first thing you do is ask, ask, ask. Interview at least two or three doctors before deciding on one. Childbirth educators, experienced mothers, doulas, and birth networks can guide you to doctors who support normal birth, VBACs, and natural twin births. Ask a lot of questions about mother's experiences and a doctor's type of practice. Do not solely trust testimonials on social media. Sometimes they may be fake. Consider motivations. Choose a healthcare provider that has your and your baby's best interests in mind. All kinds of conflicting interests can cloud a care provider's motivation from financial profit to his or her schedule to fear of lawsuits. Avoid hospitals and nursing homes that also promote IVF, cord banking, hysterectomies, and cosmetic surgery. Consider a not-for-profit hospital or an out-of-hospital birth. Choose a doctor with a cesarean and epidural rate of less than 15%. This is very important if you are trying for VBAC who accepts normal gestation as 42 to 43 weeks and who avoids getting episiotomies. Look for a healthcare provider who practices delayed cord clamping and immediate skin-to-skin -skin contact. For labor and birth support, in your interviews, ask if alternative pain management options like gas and air, water, movement, massage, and intense therapy are available. There are many alternatives to an epidural that will not increase your risk of unnecessary interventions like an epidural dust. Choose a doctor who will encourage you to bring a support team, including your choice of family, friends, a doula, or a midwife. As a husband or as a support person from her in laws, the best you can do to a mother attempting for VBAC is not to judge her. And force yourself on her influence over her choices and decision making. The litmus test as to whether you are the ideal support person as a part of her birth team is that she doesn't feel afraid to disagree to you when it comes to the choices that she wants to make and that you and her are on the same page already when it comes to her birth plan. To be a part of her birth team in her VBAC journey is a rewarding position and it starts from the time she begins her pregnancy and decides to go for a VBAC. And for that, you need to be sure that she feels secure around you throughout and can rely on you for her needs and wishes to share these precious moments with you. I would like to end by sharing some of the things you don't have to do as a birth team. Do not enforce yourself on her with regards to her birth ban or whether who will be her birth partner at the time of attempting for two lakh or VBAC. Trust her with her decisions. Do not discourage her by sharing negative experiences of other mothers trying for VBAC 
or a feedback gone wrong to dispel any negativity. Do not judge her for whatever she chooses to do or is already doing. Do not interfere with her labor. If you are present there as a part of her birth team, for example, being authoritative with regards to movement, monitoring, pushing, vocalizing, unnecessary talking, disturbing, etc. Do not interfere with what the doula is doing, even if you don't like or disagree with her. Just trust her. Do not give up on her or her care provider and force her for another C-section when she doesn't want to go for it. Also, you should be aware of who is in her birth team beforehand. Do not invade her privacy. Do not contradict her birth plan if you already know what it contains. Everyone in the birth team should be on the same page with regards to her birth plan for VBAC. Do not cause her distress. Instead, make sure she is always relaxed and calm throughout. If she doesn't like visitors, please keep them away. Do not take medical decisions on her behalf unless she is in an, she is in an unresponsive medical condition. Otherwise, it is her right to know what is going on. Do not ever make her feel guilty if things didn't go as planned or expected or even if she had to go for a repeat cesarean or in the event of any other medical emergency. She already did her best. Acknowledge her efforts and be with her by her side. It is not right to hold her accountable for things she didn't have control over and it is not the right time to discuss about it. With this, I rest here. I hope this benefits the listeners and those who wish to be part of the support system for the mothers attempting for VBAC. Thank you.